healthcare organizations have uh, an obligation, I believe, to create the environments where uh, clinicians can practice ethically. And I, I think it's sort of, um, in a way, unfair to expect that clinicians are going to do all of this work on their own. Um, organizations need to invest in creating the systems and structures that support clinicians to, to practice ethically, to do the right thing. And that's going to require new mindsets, new ways of thinking about the solutions, and to recognize that our patterns of how we've designed in healthcare organizations have often been quick fix. We've got a problem, let's get a quick intervention, often an educational program, and what we see is you know, the program's over and within six months nobody remembers uh, the content and it has had really no impact on changing behavior or the culture. So I think there's a, a need to, to embrace new paradigms, new ways of thinking about that. And so what we're offering here is the application of the conscious full spectrum model that was um, developed um, by Monica Sharma at the United Nations while she was there for over 20 years um, and has been applied in over 60 countries for large-scale change. And so what we're uh, doing is using those, that template, those tools and techniques to consider what would it look like to create a culture of ethical practice in healthcare. What's unique about her approach is that it starts from the inside out. And so the first step is really engaging leaders and stakeholders in an exploration of who am I, what do I stand for, and what values will guide our design. And that is a, a frame that is, is um, not always present in our design work. From that, then, to move into a way of, of detecting the patterns in the organization that have created the conditions for moral adversity and moral suffering. So, for example, uh, one of the things we know is that end-of-life care is, is often a, a, a contributor to moral distress. So if we were to approach that from the point of view of really looking at what are the patterns and how we communicate, how we design uh, care, how we uh, disclose treatments to patients, all of those are patterns that contribute to the situations that cause moral distress, moral adversity. And then, instead of starting first with the solution, then from there we design what is the intervention that will shift from uh, poor communication to more collaborative communication. And how do we actually design specifically to facilitate that shift? 